Thanks for your patience. Uh, welcome to Culture Hub. And uh, this is uh, Waves of Gravity. Thanks for coming out. Um, it's the first uh, in-person performance that we've had uh, at Culture Hub since the onset of the pandemic here in New York. Um, so you're in a very select few. Uh, we're trying to keep the audience numbers uh, down small, but um, you know, it, it really uh, is meaningful to see real faces in, in real spaces. So thank you for being here and thank you for uh, supporting a live performance. Um, I wanna thank um, uh, our founding partners, uh, La Mama Experimental Theater Club uh, in Korea. Uh, and without them, uh, our programming just wouldn't be possible. So just wanna give them a big thanks. Um, I also wanna thank the creative team of Waves of Gravity. It's been a real pleasure working with them, putting this together over this week. And of course, they've put in weeks and weeks and weeks uh, before that. But um, you'll get to meet all of them at the end uh, of the evening. We'll have a short Q&A with the whole creative team. So we would love it if you can stick around. And if you have any questions about the show or the process, uh, that we'll happily answer them for you. Um, we're live streaming tonight. Uh, uh, so uh, this is going out to a larger audience to expand the reach. Um, so hello, everybody that's tuning in online. Uh, I wanna thank uh, the New York City Artist Corps grants that are also helping make this possible, that are uh, really um, trying to activate the city and bring uh, back live performance in, in real space. Um, and of course, all of the, the Culture Hub funders as well. Uh, a few practical things, um, the fire exits. We have a fire uh, exit out this back way here and also from whence you came uh, towards Third Street. It would be great if everyone can silence their devices, anything that makes sound, uh, yeah, and just put them away. And we try to avoid photography and, and, um, and video and uh, yeah, devices that make noise. And I think I did everything. And uh, without further ado, I'm gonna give you Neil Murgai. Diamond. 
this place. Astronomer with a telescope, searching for the Big Bang. Continental drifter, hyphenated, hybridized, fused at the molecular level. Exploring stellar regions. Up in time and space. Improvise music. It's an endless process of becoming. You can try to hold the experience during this moment, this moment, this moment. Well, you can try. We, we are all, all in, a in a process of becoming. Of becoming. Do you remember being a kid? Anybody? 
I do. It's all a blur to me. Time had a different pace back then. For most people, their childhood was isolated memories. The moment you live in as a child is a much bigger percentage of all the moments you have lived. All your life, you've just been a kid. You don't have an experience of that larger time cycle. Now, I have this concept about the gravity of the moment. That's right, you can increase the weight of the moment and you can make time slow down. Just like in Einstein's theory of general relativity. You know that one? For sure. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Well, basically, the faster you're moving, the slower time goes. Slower. And the more gravity there slower. is, the slower time goes. This is slower. true. Slower. Time. My poetic take time. on Einstein's theory is that if something serious is happening, or you consciously increase the gravity, the weight of the moment through your focus, sound and attention, you can actually slow down your experience of time. And those gravity moments in life stick out. Fun, sad, serious. You know what I'm talking about. When you're a kid and you're having fun, time can go so quickly, right? But then if you have that heavy moment happen as a kid, that's heavy, man. It can be really slow. It can feel much slower than even now when I'm trying to slow, slow down, down. Slow. Time. Time. Consciously. 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 Warping time and space. I vaguely remember lying awake at night in our house in Westboro, maybe being bored. I couldn't sleep. I remember lying in bed and time moving really slowly. And there was this girl named Beldam. I didn't like her or anything. It was just her name, Beldam. And her name just kept going through my head. Beldam. 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 It was just kept going through my head and I was so bored. Beldam. 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 I had these waves of boredom coming over. Beldam. Beldam. And it just took so long. That time was just, can I just go to sleep? Beldam. Waves of boredom. What if we could create waves, waves of, gravity? of gravity? Like when two black holes collide, literally when two black holes collide, an actual wave of gravity is formed that changes the fabric of space, space and time. And time. Another night there was a moment where I remember lying in bed, maybe playing with my Star Wars figures. It was a similar state of melancholy, and I was thinking about death somehow. It was, it was vague. Then my dad came into my room. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just thinking. He said, you're too young for that. Go have fun. Stop, Stop thinking. thinking. I didn't know then what would happen just a few months later. I was 12 years old. I got a call from the hospital. It was late at night. My dad was still out playing tennis. Now my mother worked at a hospital. So I was surprised that they were asking for her. They should have known that she was in India at that moment. They asked for a neighbor who might be looking out for my brother and I. Moments later, I watched as he pulled into our driveway, walked up to the front door, and that moment took, took forever. forever. And he told me that my father had passed from a heart attack. Now I have these isolated images from him. Some random memories, certain ones stick out more than others. Oh, and I have his LP, LP collection, collection, the only media known to last. And I have some of his mannerisms. My family in India tell me that 
you know, I, I move like him. I even eat like him. Move my hands like him. So sometimes I wonder, you know, did he ever move like this? Like this. 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 Maybe I should stop thinking.
So for those of you who don't know, this is a sitar. I wouldn't say sitar was my calling at first. Music had started to become my calling, though, calling me away from life as an engineering student. That's right. I studied civil engineering because it seemed like the most civil thing to do at the time. And I was in classes, cal calculus, physics, chemistry, structural dynamics, um, Electricity and magnetism. I didn't do too well in the EMAG. I had to do the REMAG. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have to do three mag. Sorry, mom. I was using my left brain in class, but outside of class, I was using my right brain playing guitar, writing my own music, and working at the radio station uh, where I learned about music from all over the world and hosted a show called Continental Drift. It was only years later that I learned to refuse these parts of my brain in studying the science and mathematics of sound and music. After I graduated from Georgia Tech, I went to India and decided to start learning sitar. And you have to start with the basics, really just the basics. You have to start with sitting. That's right, just sitting on the ground. You have to balance the, sit balance the sitar on the ball of your foot, contort your other foot around. We sit on the ground, not in a chair, right? So you have to learn to sit for long, long periods of time. And we develop a rigorous discipline, which is hard for me. I've never been all that disciplined. <laughs> strings of the sitar can take a long time to tune, but it's so rewarding when those strings sing back at you with waves of a harmonious, overtone-rich sound. <laughs> so you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically. You can't just sit down and practice six hours or even two hours a day. You have to dedicate lots of time, countless hours to imbibe the raga science, learning to do one thing for long stretches of time. later, I was finishing my MFA thesis. My head was swimming in topics about physics and metaphysics of sound and music, 
how can sound exist without time? How can time exist without sound? My head was deep in these concepts, and it was the day before my MFA portfolio was due. But then, oh. Hi, this is Cindy. Can I speak with Neil? Cindy Lauper? I'm playing with Wyclef on David Letterman tomorrow. We want a sitar player, and I heard you might be the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would love to. I'm you so You gotta honored. play some hip hop. Damn, with all these bands playing hip hop okay, music. Okay, so are you union? You gotta be union for this gig. I uh, I not union actually. Oh, uh, hold on, um, hold on. Let me talk to my I'll manager. Hold on. I'll join the union. No problem. Okay, oh. you don't have to be oh. union. Okay, great. It's so funny you call me. I've been thinking about time and sound in your song, time uh, after uh, time. See you tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. That sounds good. All right, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this is good. Our next guest is a, uh, a Grammy award-winning musician whose new EP is entitled uh, From the Hut uh, to the Projects to the Mansion. Can we, you want a chair? Can we get you a chair? I'm sorry. I did, didn't occur to me. Uh, you need a chair? You all right? Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah, no, he's fine. <laughs> where are my manners? No, he meant to be there. I don't, I don't That's know. where he's yeah. supposed to be. Okay. I meant to be there. That is where I was supposed to be. I was definitely meant to be there. But the best part... The best part was when we were plugging in our instruments and Paul Schaefer and the Tonight Show band were playing this classic Bob Marley song that we all know. And he looked at me through his sunglasses and he gave me this look that he'd given so many musicians over the years. He said, yeah, man, and he broke down the band. So I just started playing along. Clef, they got up on the mic and they started singing. saw the show. It was instant recognition. It seemed like everyone I had ever met contacted me afterwards with congratulations. It's a little overwhelming, actually. I was on Letterman, so now my music was a success, maybe even a good career choice. Meanwhile, when I asked Wyclef where the watch party was, he said, yeah, man, I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll call you. Okay, cool, Wyclef. All right. It was so fun. That day, time was going so fast. That was 15 minutes of fame in four minutes of song. I was the only sitar player to ever play on the David Letterman show. 
It's true. I asked Paul Schaefer. Thank you, folks. Beautiful. Great job. It's a, a, a sitar. Is that what it is? That's right. Like it's that? a sitar. That's right. He was asking, and he was also telling everybody, too. All right. How you doing? You guys still with me here? That's really good to hear, because this show is not just me. It's about you and me. Your focused energy and attention create and shape the space. Now, have, has anybody ever heard of entrainment? Anyone? Entrainment? Entrainment is a physical phenomenon where, like wa waveforms, they want to sync up, to meet up. That's right. A physical phenomenon, waveforms that are close to each other, they want to become synced up. Maybe you've seen people walking in NYC and their arms and legs just start swinging in unison. Or maybe you're having a conversation with someone and the ideas are flowing and you're on the same wavelength, man. Or did you know that the Earth and Moon are entrained such that we only see one face of the moon as it goes around the Earth every 28 days. Now that's entertainment. I mean, entrainment. It's the process of like waveforms sinking together. Now this drum is called Da. It's a great tool for entraining minds. It comes from Iran, from Persia. In fact, I wanted to go to Iran once. I was traveling in India. And I wanted to go study daf in Iran. I had a letter from Jalal Zulfan, a great master of Persian music who had already accompanied in concerts of Persian classical and folk music. So first I went to the Iranian embassy and showed them the letter. This won't work. You need a letter from your own embassy. Uh, okay, so I, I went to the US embassy I waited around for what seemed like forever. Finally, somebody shows up. I showed him the letter from Jalal Zulfanun. I explained how I just wanted to go to Iran and study. And I, so I showed him the letter. And I, I, I just wanted to go to Iran. I really need this. Can you get, I need this letter from you to get my visa. That's what the Iranians told me in India. What can we do? We don't issue any such letters, especially not for the Iranians. Oh, that's harsh. Okay. So I go back to the Iranian embassy, right? And this time I brought my daf. So I showed them the letter again, right? And I just tell them I want to go to Iran. I want to study the music and the culture. It just wasn't working. So in a flash of brilliance, I just started playing my drum.
What do you think? This is the Embassy of Iran, not a concert hall. Please leave now. Oh, man. I didn't want to go to Iran anyway. Well, what, I, what I want to do now is stretch. Anybody want to move in their seat, get comfortable in their seat? Just move around a little bit. Maybe we could all take a deep breath together. A couple more. Now you're with me, because I want to tell you about this singing that you've been hearing me doing, overtone singing. In fact, all singing is, all singing is overtone singing. It's true. In reality, we are always singing a myriad dimensions of notes all the time. We just can't hear it. We, have, we can't hear it in ourselves or in the voices of others. We aren't aware of it. I'm talking about overtones as a physical manifestation of all sound, all waveforms. We need to listen with judicious attention to the mathematically aligned musical infinite harmonics, the overtone universe inside all waveforms, all sound. Like right here and right now. The magic of the sitar sound is in the jawari, the bridge that gives life to the sound. That buzz you hear is the overtones, infinite in number, the life of the party. And now with the voice, We'll start with a hum, which is the best way to dampen all the overtones. And now the overtones revealed. No effects here. I'll cut the reverb. No effects here. Just me, the microphone, and the sound built into our own voices. Oh, but I also have my overtone warp tunnel right here, which is how I use what I use to travel around the universe. <laughs> the concentric rings represent different pitches, different frequencies. So you can see the overtones in living color all the overtones in each note. Our voices contain all these dimensions. If we could just learn to pull back the curtain. Now you don't have to ask, how do you do this, Neil? You have to ask, why do you do this, Neil? That's right because why really slowly is oo o a a e and that sweeps up to the overtones you can watch <laughs> and the reverse would be you a secret. The last part is alm, the primordial sound. Alm. You can get four distinct overtones from that. Alm. So remember this when you go home and practice in the bathroom. No, really, I used to go around New York City looking for the most reverby, echoey places I could find to practice, like stairwells or the subway. 
I would be singing at the top of my lungs, and the subway would, the train would come by, the brakes would be screeching, you know, Astor Place where it goes around the bend, and the brakes are screeching right there. And I'm singing even louder and louder, and the, my overtones are matching with the frequencies of the brakes, and nobody can hear me because the train is so loud. Anybody else do that? I can't be the only one. Okay, we got one over here. I've worked with these sounds for over 20 years, and I found a lot of comfort and support in discovering the tones within the tones, the overtones. Living in that sound, the pure sound, is a healing experience. <laughs>
I made a song about the creation of the universe. It's a kid's song. I've written a lot of them over the years, but this one was my first time. I wanted to make it simple about the sound. That's the one. And how that sound created the universe and the galaxy and the stars and planets and all of us. Because we're all made from the same from stardust. stardust. This is the concept of... You know it. The Big Bang. The sound that created the universe. How do you tell that story to a child? First there was the sound. Now I'm teaching it to my two-year-old daughter, Leela. She's so inspired by all things space. She has to see the moon every night. She knows the names of the planets in order. She wants to know about the galaxies. I think I did something right there. Something right there. But I was actually a much younger man in a different space and time. And I did not realize it then, but perhaps, perhaps I wrote this story for my first daughter, Rihanna. Shortly after she was born, Rihanna passed. After only a few days of being on this planet, this was almost 20 years ago.
Rihanna was here for such a short time, but she had such a huge impact on my life. How can those few days of space and time feel so much longer than the days themselves? How can one person's life have so many ripples and waves throughout my much longer life? Ten years passed. Losing a loved one is one of the heaviest moments you can go through. And yet time just keeps marching on. I learned lots about music and played hundreds of gigs, learned how to cook like a champ, had long rafting trips through the Grand Canyon. I even got my MFA in interdisciplinary arts and learned how to mix it all up. Then I have to get real. We're talking about the black holes here. My partner, Jessica, who had such a zest for life and was so connected to earth and nature. Jessica, she too passed. It's hard to hear and even harder to say. But she was in a lot of pain and she and took she her own life. life. It was 10 years later that I only just started the process of trying to pull back, see the larger picture, like an astronomer through a telescope, searching for the big cycles of time when the small things you can see without a telescope don't make sense. But since then, I have been making my own path forward and choosing to move on in time. Through healing and sound and music and community with Brooklyn Raga Massive. Anybody know it? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. We literally started our weekly jam session the month after Jessica passed. It's been an ongoing music therapy, a place to experiment with new ideas, be with friends, and also create space for other performers and lovers of raga music. Today, we've been trying to slow down time. Feel the gravity of each moment. But time is going to catch up with us, just like making improvisational music. We don't know how it will end until it's over. First there was the song. The 
First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the universe was made from that sound. Said the universe was made from that sound. With billions of galaxies spiraling around. Said all the galaxies are made of stars. In the night sky, you can see them from afar. In the night sky, you can see them from, see them from afar. Around our star, the sun. Around our star, the sun is the solar system. All the planets spinning, all the planets spinning, all the planets spinning in eternal, in eternal, in eternal rhythm. In eternal rhythm. On our planet, Mother Earth. On our planet, Mother Earth. You find all of us. You find all of us. Made from the same stardust. We're all made from the same stardust, said. We're all made from the same stardust. At first, first there was the sound. There was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the first there was the sound. First there was the sound on. Everybody sing on. 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 Shanti. First there was the first there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the first there was the sound. First there was the first there was the first there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the first there was the sound. First there was the sound on. First there was the sound. First there was the sound. 
Thank you, thank you. Y'all still with me here? Yes, all right. Feeling okay? It's time for the last song. I know we're talking about time a lot these days. Maybe this time will just last forever. We'll make it last as long as possible, but it's the last song and I'm just gonna set up for this here. I used to hear from people that my music was very sad. Well, it, it made them sad. Maybe I was sad inside. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, but it made them sad. So I wanted to see a song about being too hopeful or hoping too hard, or sometimes having any hope at all. I started to worry during the better times of lightness and joy that, oh no, there's another black hole just waiting around the corner. So I've been afraid of hope, but I hope for hope. Hope is a thing worth hoping for. I am here with you. And I wonder is getting together in a room full of people again during COVID a form of hope? For sure. Vaccinated, of course. Is storytelling a form of hope? Definitely. Is making music a form of hope? Yes. Is hope another word for healing? Absolutely. This might take a long, long while. Black holes collide in waves of 
gravity warping space and time. Black holes collide in waves of gravity warping space and time. Down for the good times. Can we speed it up for the bad times? This might take a long, long time. Entrainment of vibrations, sinking hearts and minds, sending waves of gravity, warping space and time. Cause black holes collide. Warping space and time Healing sound Healing sound A scientist of sound I'm mathematically putting it down An astronomer with a telescope Exploring stellar regions Raga science and the oral tradition, overtones of meaning with this rendition, transform the waves into positive energy. It's always got to be you and you. Watch I bring back to the top, you know, get up the watch I bring back to the top, you know, get up the time without 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 All right, you all feeling good? All right, I want to give a big thanks, big thanks to, first of all, to my mom, Indra Gill, and my stepdad, Barry Reeves, who are here. Barry actually filmed the, uh, the footage of the beach that you saw at the beginning there. And to my wife, Seema Lisa, Lisa Pandia, who created this beautiful artwork behind me and the videos, all the videos she produced. And this wouldn't be possible without my good longtime friend and family member, our director, Nicole Biancasino. And give it up for the whole Culture Hub team. We got Billy, Deandra, Jean, the whole team. They've kept music going through the pandemic and art and, and theater going, with live streaming and everything. And big thanks to the City Artist Corps Fund for supporting this here today and so many other great performances around the city. And I'm yours truly, Neil Murgai. Thank you. Time without, time without, time without, time without.
Black holes collide in waves of gravity, warping space and time. Give me a clap. Okay, so um, we can have a brief talk back. Um, there is a lot that you could respond to, you could respond to or question about. There's a lot of tech on stage. <laughs> so sometimes in Work Culture Hub, which is like, you know, doing a lot of uh, very forward thinking, state of the art tech stuff during this whole time or about the, um, or about the show itself. And we have, um, this is Seema Lisa Pandya, who Neil gave a shout out to, who did the arts and animations. Neil Murgai, we can give it up again for Neil. Yeah. And uh, I'm Nicole Biancasino, and I am the director. So, anybody out there want to be passed a mic? Don't be shy. Yeah, we're just a bunch of people streaming from a place in New York City. Please, yeah, you can just respond. So, uh, the visual part, it's not working. There you go. You, you hear me now? Okay. The visuals were awesome, really beautiful, especially with Neil's mumbling. <laughs> Those light effects, the, like the just like radiating, like the, 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 the flowers and the things, it was like my favorite. <laughs> but I think it was awesome. So, and the uh, question for you is like, um, so is the music uh, for you like, uh, s like except for um, like, it's maybe it's hard to, uh, are you just trying to be in the moment really? Or I is there something more that you would like to achieve like while doing this? Yes. It's, it's always tough to be in the moment and have this whole process and show. Um, but yes, th the answer is yes, for sure. I'm always trying to be in the moment, especially for, for this show. You know, I, it started as a, a pandemic project. I've been looping, uh, practicing looping music for years using a number of different apps and pedals. And then at the beginning of the pandemic, I started using Ableton Live, very sophisticated software. And then slowly had a vision to for visuals to accompany that and to, to create live video loops at the same time as I was creating live audio loops. And I uh, had been working with Seema uh, using her animations of the tabla art um, as some, some backdrops for things I was doing. And then 
you know, I was doing the, you know, creating all the music and all the audio looping and the video looping and mixing and manipulating, and I thought, wow, I'm just not doing enough here. So, so then I called up Nicole and I said, we need to add a story to this, right? And, um, and she said, well, let's make it your own story. I, I didn't even know what story I wanted to make. And she said, okay, let's make it your own story. And then we, we slowly developed that based on some things from my MFA and these concepts that I've had for a long time. And to get back to your question, yes, you know, trying to be trying to be in the moment within the certain framework that I have, but uh, kind of free to move around in that in, in certain ways. Yes. I just want to say that the car is like putting me in a moment, like the moment you pull the string. Like the mo so that's something that just brings me the most like to the moment. I think I just wanted to, A, thank you for, for responding to the visuals, um, but um, yeah, just also in parallel that that visual that you mentioned, the one you know where there's like kind of the diagonal line that we see a lot. Or I, I call it my timeline, um, but that also came about in in a moment. Um, you know, we were, uh, I was experimenting with um, with kind of visual uh, feedback loops, just as like Niels also uh, experimenting with live looping, and also we saw some some visuals that he was doing with, with live feedback, creating, you know, kind of fractals, basically. Um, but when you put a camera into, you know, to record what's coming out of the TV and it's kind of feeding back on itself, what came out was also just a moment in, in the chaos that we were able to capture to use for the, for the space. So I felt like that really just kind of blended really well. But thank you. I'm glad you noticed that. Anybody else? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, I think that through your work, I feel that there is a lot of uh, practice on reminder of what, how everything is connected in us and universe. Um, I find that it's lacking in normal everyday life uh, phenomena, but at the same time when the critical life situation happened is such an important key point to always go back to that same thought. So I wanted to know um, through your work and your practice so much and inform me so much in a such a creative way, how do you constantly, how do you say, in your life, uh, reminding yourself that this is the key of all point mm -hmm. in life that I would like to hear and understand uh, what what is the key word that you use for yourself? Mm. If that an, if is that clear yeah. to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I guess I developed into the into the sound practice, and uh, it's uh, the sound. It is it is a healing experience, and um, I don't know about a key word, but over time, as I practice more and more and discover learned about sounds from around the world and the overtone singing and the f science and mathematics of it you know there's a lot there's a lot of comfort there and 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 learning about you know that yes music is healing you know scientifically it changes the vibrations of the brain we can actually can shamans beat the drum at a certain tempo because it entrains the brain waves into the theta wave state that is the state for uh, meditation and uh, and relaxation, deep, deep, deep relaxation. So they beat the drum, doom, 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 this beat, four to eight beats per second, basically. And it literally entrains our minds to go into that that receptive but meditative state. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I have a question from the Vimeo stream, um, from Yelini and me. I have, me. A, I have a question from <laughs> the Vimeo stream from Yelini Dream. Oh Yelini nice. says, yay, What's up? great What's up, job. Yelini? Could you speak more to the concept of black holes colliding and the relationship of gravity? Yeah, literally, black holes are, are the biggest gravity things in existence, right? And 
They're so powerful that when they collide, I mean, <laughs> we just sang about it, but, but this, it's like, it's really true. When black holes collide, they send out waves of gravity. And we, we've recently been, that's something that Einstein predicted a long time ago, but in the last, I think, five or six years, we started to, to measure it um, through these big, uh, miles-long um, lasers. And then there's like one laser going this way and one laser going this way. And um, you know the time that they take, if it can be changed just by like a fraction, just infinitesimal fraction. But through that, they can actually know where the black hole is, you know, where this collision is happening. They can find it, and maybe even the size of the black holes. I don't understand all that part of it, but um, but you know, gravity. Einstein says that that gravity slows down time, right? Heavy gravity slows down time. Are you going really fast? Time is slowed down. So in a black hole, time will go very slowly. But you know, the, when they collide, they send out they send out the waves. So what if we could have so much intention behind our purpose and whatever it is that we're doing that we create our own wave of gravity and flip it and turn it into a positive energy force? That's the question I want to find out one day. Any other last question or thought? Anybody? Comments? <laughs> suggestions? <laughs> observations? <laughs> observations. <laughs> that space and time. Great. Please. Just a quick comment. I mean, I, I don't know that I understand everything in terms, well, I know that I don't understand everything <laughs> in terms of the science and the mathematics behind it, but I just want to say I feel like you all have done such an excellent job of, um, of experi experientially, you know, kind of conveying the, the feeling of how much more there is and of, you know, getting us all here in the moment and, and training our energy waves. And it's just a really beautiful way to kind of I think communicate probably a lot of what you know, even if we don't understand it uh, all literally. Um, I think you've just done a wonderful job of, of bringing us all into it and, and sharing it. So thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I don't understand it all either, especially the mathematics of it. But but they've proven it, so I'm accepting it as fact. You know, <laughs> and I'll take my own poetic take on it. So that's a lot. That's it. Thank you all so much for being here. We're going to take this show to hopefully like lots of places and tour this show. So please support us and share it. This will be archived. You can go and share it with all your friends and tell everyone else about it. And uh, this is our last night. So big thanks to Seema for putting up with me and putting this and Nicole <laughs> for, for uh, putting and the team Culture Hub. Thank you all.